Hello! Hello, meu povo! Como é que vocês estão? Mais uma live para vocês, porém, a live de hoje vai ser épica. É a minha primeira live em inglês. Mari, você tem que ficar nessa live. Eu convidei uma estudante da Princeton. É a primeira e principal universidade aqui nos Estados Unidos. O povo fala assim, ah, é Harvard, Harvard. Harvard, Harvard é para business. Mas em termos de economia, em termos de engenharia, em termos de teologia, Princeton é o número um de 439 universidades nos Estados Unidos. E eu convidei uma estudante de engenharia para ela poder assistir a nossa live hoje. E ela participar com a gente. Eu vou entrevistar <risos> pela primeira vez em inglês. Eu vou rasgar todo o meu inglês aqui. E ontem a Maris me fez uma pergunta assim. Ah, eu queria muito que meus filhos fossem estudar nos Estados Unidos. Eu vou perguntar pra ela, pra estudante, que a gente vai estar entrevistando. E aí eu vou perguntar pra ela como é que ela faz, né? Pra ela pra, pra ser... Ela é americana, né? Ela é da Flórida. Mas... Eu vou perguntar para ela, para estudantes do Brasil, por exemplo, que tem vontade de vir estudar aqui no, no, nos Estados Unidos, é, como é que faz para fazer uma aplicação, por exemplo, numa universidade tão importante como a Princeton? Então, compartilha essa live, porque esse conteúdo aqui, brother, é para você que tá aí do outro lado e fala assim, ai meu Deus, eu quero muito, eu quero muito ir para os Estados Unidos, quero muito trabalhar nos Estados Unidos, eu vou fazer uma live com os advogados aqui, eu não sei quando, mas... Nas próximas semanas eu vou estar fazendo a live com os advogados aqui para explicar sobre o processo, como aplicar. Você que tem, é, que é uma mão de obra qualificada no Brasil e quer vir aqui para os Estados Unidos, quer trabalhar aqui, usar suas habilidades daí, aí do Brasil aqui nos Estados Unidos. Como é que faz para aplicar? Como é que faz para pegar um documento? Como é que faz para ter um green, green card? Então, então, Leila, você que é advogada, a Leila é uma pessoa maravilhosa. Ela adora meus óculos. Vou te mandar todos os meus óculos. Aliás, quando eu for no Brasil, eu levo um de cada pra você. E você pode, viu, Sandra? É, ser uma advogada aqui, mas tem que tirar o bar, que é como se fosse o OAB no Brasil. E aí eu vou fazer uma live aqui nas próximas semanas com um escritório que nos ajudou a tirar o nosso green car. Que incrível, gente. Olha, algumas pessoas até falei aqui, tá? Algumas pessoas falavam assim... Ah, quando tem um filho americano, é, automaticamente tem um green card. Não é assim que funciona, tá? Quando você tem um filho americano, é, você tem que esperar ele ter 21 anos de idade pra ele poder te dar a documentação pra você ser, ter um green card e depois você aplicar pra cidadania. Porém, porém, entretanto, todavia, eu consegui o meu green card junto com a minha família porque nós temos é, habilidades excepcionais. Existe um visto pra esse tipo de, de mão de obra qualificada. E eu apliquei há dois anos atrás e a gente já recebeu o nosso Green Card. Então, você que tem vontade de vir pra cá, que seu filho venha pra cá estudar, tá? Compartilha essa live. Quem não conseguir assistir a live hoje, também vai ter a oportunidade de poder assistir no canal. Você já tá seguindo o canal do Artificial Heart? Tô até com a camisa aqui do Artificial Heart. A gente vai colocar a live lá no, no canal do Artificial Heart. A gente vai colocar alguns shorts também no TikTok. Então, você vai poder acompanhar. Hoje é a minha primeira ah, entrevista em inglês. A minha colinha tá bem aqui, ó. Eu vou ler tudo que eu não tô nem aí. O meu inglês é rasgante. Eu broco no inglês, entendeu? Se segura, porque casinha aqui hoje vai gastar todo o inglês que aprendeu nesses anos que estou aqui na América. E eu tô esperando o Guilherme aparecer aqui. Que vocês sabem que o Guilherme é o meu sócio. Ele fez uma coisa incrível. Ele transformou um livro de 120 anos atrás de Dostoiévski, que é um escritor russo consagrado, em um livro para as novas gerações, milênio, geração alfa, geração Z, Gen Z, Gen Alpha e geração milênio, numa perspectiva HQ, né? E também sci-fi, ficção científica. É muito top o conteúdo. O conteúdo é bombástico. Eu tô com a camisa aqui para fazer o mexão, ó. Top demais. Muito, muito mais. Eu, ele falou assim, ah, quer dizer, coloca o chapéu de Christmas pra gente já entrar no clima. Eu não tive nem tempo de procurar o meu chapéu de Christmas, mas a gente já tá no clima de Natal aqui em casa. Aqui em Chicago, agora são 6h13 da noite, e aí no Brasil já são 9h13. A gente tenta fazer essas lives aqui, colocar o conteúdo no canal pra vocês poderem assistir. Se você não segue o canal Artificial Heart, já segue, tá? A Artificial Heart, tudo junto que é Corações Artificiais, e para você poder assistir a live toda. A gente vai dar altas dicas, tá? A Alane Fan, ela tá aqui na live, 
E aí eu vou adicionar ela daqui a pouco pra, pra eu fazer entrevista. Ela é uma estudante da Princeton, gente. A Princeton é a universidade americana mais importante dos Estados Unidos, tá? Ela tá no ranking da primeira universidade de 439 universidades ao redor do mundo. Então a Princeton é uma das principais universidades, ela faz engenharia lá. E por que a gente chamou ela? Por dois motivos. Pra, primeiro, para ela compartilhar a vida dela acadêmica, como é para você que tem vontade de participar de repente é, de uma vida universitária americana. E segundo, porque ela é amante de Comic Con, de Comic Livros, de livros de história em quadrinhos, e que é a nova tendência do momento. E aí, a gente tá convidando a Lani para poder fazer essa live com a gente, tá? Ajuda a gente compartilhando essa live, manda pra milhares de pessoas aí, e eu tô esperando o Guilherme entrar aqui. Talvez eu feche e abra aqui. Calma aí. Eu já volto. A live vai ser em inglês. Ó, o Guilherme já entrou, já vou entrar, já vou colocar ele aqui, tá? Vamos lá. Já vou adicionar o Guilherme. Hum... Já aceitando. Good evening, Chicago! Good evening, New York! Like How's everybody doing? Today? Sorry, I'm just setting up here. I, I'm Look. talking Portuguese about my follows because uh, you forgot to uh, share with me the Instagram of Lani. Yes, I will. I, I will. accept to her. Accept to her or invitation her for like. Yeah, it should be at. Gente, eu vou errar para todo mundo inglês, então. Compartilha so, aí, porque essa live vai ser épica, tá? This is her IG, I just sent it. At Piton slash ACS. Edgy her. Edgy yeah, her. This her. is live. You know? You know? Yeah, folks, we have a very special guest with us. Mm -hmm. A student all the way from Princeton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And she'll be here with us. And you're in for a treat, okay? And while we're are... at it, don't forget to buy your mug for the holiday season, right? Ah! Merry Christmas! Merry hey, Christmas. Hey, hey. Guilherme, are you very, very funny? Look at you, boy! Yeah! <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Happy holidays, everyone! It's, it's... This right. is... Don't forget to support us, okay, with this really cool mug that we have here, uh -huh. right? In shirt, look at it. Uh, today I, I put my blue shirt. Look awesome! It. It's Yay. very beautiful. I love this shirt. It's my favorite it's color. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got, we got our mug here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah! It's nice. We got nice. this. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. And we got our little Christmas tree. You can make this order and artificial Our website, com, right, website, mm -hmm. Artificial heart that can. You make your order and the make it order about shirts, about mugs, uh, water bottles, hats, and hoodies. Do, we have a lot of uh, think for you uh, help us this project because this project is, is very important for new generation. <laughs> yeah, we want to wish you <laughs> happy <laughs> holidays. Stop <laughs> with this, Guilherme. And a lot of good cheer <laughs> at this at the end of this holiday <laughs> season from your oh artificial heart family, Guilherme. Just a second. Just give me one second. O Guilherme tá fazendo a árvore de Natal em torno dos nossos mugs. E essa é a primeira live que eu tô fazendo em inglês, então aproveita para apoiar esse projeto aí. O Guilherme tá fazendo merchan, colocando, comprou todos os equipamentos de Natal pra gente poder promover a nossa live e mostrar os nossos materiais. Olha que incrível, tá muito massa, Guilherme. Então apoia esse projeto, que esse projeto... É um projeto maravilhoso que você vai poder assistir na Netflix em pouco tempo aí na sua casa. Nós vamos transformar esse livro, Artificial Heart, em um streaming com oito episódios na Netflix. E também vai se tornar um videogame em breve nos principais streams de games também. Fantastic. Fantastic. Ok. Uh, 
Guilherme, convida a Lani, por favor, porque yeah, eu não tenho. Gonna... Uhum. Pede para ela mandar o convite e aí eu aceito o convite. Ah, essa live, a sua internet, Guilherme, hum, está loading, está carregando. A sua internet caiu. Não, é o seguinte, é, acho que tem mais uns 10 minutinhos e ela já entra. Então a gente pode falar, fazer em português por enquanto, para os nossos okay. telespectadores do Brasil. Tem alguém que ah, fala assim, eu não entendo nada, mas estou achando lindo. Eles começaram, gente, essa é a minha primeira live em inglês. Eu vou rasgar todo o meu inglês nessa live, entendeu? Então já começa apoiando, já começa compartilhando, porque é muito importante que a gente chegue o mais distante possível aqui nesse instante. Ai, fazer o cara, Fazer o cara. Eu botei a cadeira para trás, a cadeira foi com tudo. Eu também, eu estou tentando ajeitar uh! aqui para o pessoal poder ver o nosso merchan. Só que não tá ajudando muito. Tenta afastar porque... a câmera, mas... Sabe, eu consegui um, um pedestal. Quando você vier aqui em casa, eu vou te mostrar. Eu é, consegui um pedestal que eu consigo bem, colocar bem brega. a câmera bem alta. Eu tenho um bem brega. Mas eu acho que aqui, talvez, aí, né, a gente pode fazer tipo a, a propaganda. Daqui a né? duas semanas o Guilherme vai estar aqui em casa. A gente vai ter uma live épica é, com o Guilherme é, Jamilson. Né? Muito melhor que essa de Natal. Porque e vai a ser gente... uma de Natal de verdade. Vai ser uma de Natal de verdade. A gente vai fazer uma live é. aqui e talvez a gente dê um rolê é, por Millennials Park, o, o, os principais pontos turísticos aqui de Chicago. É, você pode deixar assim de lado. Pode deixar de lado, senão fica na, sua, na frente do seu rosto. Tá de boa. É, tá. tá de boa. Eu Enquanto mostrar, isso, mas... eu vou compartilhando aqui com a galera, pra galera aí assistindo. E para quem não assistir, quem não vai assistir agora, que consiga assistir depois. Então, Pronto. já vou com compartilhar. Compartilha aí também com a, a galera. Gente, essa é a minha primeira live que eu vou fazer em inglês, tá? Daqui a pouco eu vou rasgar todo o meu inglês aqui. Eu fiz um roteiro. Ai! Se segura, meu povo! E eu já vou até começar a falar aqui uma coisa que eu acho muito importante, Guilherme, que toda live eu acho que a gente deveria pontuar isso. É o seguinte, gente, o que é o Artificial Heart? O Artificial Heart é um livro que o Guilherme escreveu algum tempo atrás e ficou guardado no, no computador dele. E esse livro é uma releitura do livro Irmãos Karamazovsky de Dostoiévski, escritor russo muito conhecido, consagrado. É, e é um livro que só que o Guilherme teve um, um dom divino de transformar esse livro que traz uma história muito profunda para a humanidade em um livro de ficção científica, sci-fi, graphic novel, numa pegada neo-vitoriana. É, e a galera vai poder assistir, velho. Aí a gente transformou isso em, em livro que a gente já está rodando daqui a algum tempo aí nos, nas principais plataformas de livros. E nas principais livrarias você vai poder comprar, se você fala espanhol, spanish, inglês, japonês ou português, você vai ter disponível um desses livros em, no idioma que você fala e você vai poder não só ler, como a gente está transformando esse, esse material do Artificial Heart em um conteúdo bombástico de oito episódios. O primeiro volume vai ter, vão ser dois volumes o livro, o primeiro volume serão oito episódios na Netflix, Amazon TV, Apple TV, Paramount Plus, nos principais streams. Você vai ter a oportunidade de poder é, assistir esse conteúdo. E também, se você é um fã de games, você vai poder ter a oportunidade de jogar esse tipo de conteúdo. Brother, isso é bombástico, Guilherme. O que, é que você fala pra gente? Fala aí, Guilherme. Não, eu acho uma maravilha que a gente está muito empolgado né, em compartilhar esse projeto com vocês. Né? Hoje a gente tem uma live muito especial, vai ser em inglês, né? mas é, com uma, uma aluna né, que ela está desenvolvendo um projeto fantástico, porque a gente não só traz é, pessoas para falar do, do Artificial Heart, mas também é, introduz você para alguns nossos parceiros, pessoas que estão fazendo é, conteúdo de qualidade maravilhoso, é, como o nosso. Então a gente, a gente vocês vão, vocês, eu não quero dar nenhum spoiler, né, Kézia? Não. Você, mas é, vai ser uma surpresa muito bacana. Yeah. Lani, ela é uma estudante em Princeton, 
A Princeton, gente, é a primeira universidade, a mais importante universidade, mais antiga, tá? Entre as quatro mais antigas universidades americanas. Sua live, sua câmera tá travada, Guilherme. Ela é uma das lives, uma das lives, ó, uma das universidades mais antigas americanas. E, gente, ela é estudante de engenharia lá em Princeton e ela e o Guilherme coordenam um projeto dentro de Princeton. O Guilherme faz doutorado em Princeton e a Lani é estudante de é, engenharia. E a gente convidou a Lani para poder compartilhar um pouco do, das coisas que ela gosta. Olha que legal, você vai ter a oportunidade de conhecer essas pessoas, de fazer o um network com essas pessoas, se conectar, ouvir as experiências deles e ver como é que você que está aí do outro lado do país... Olha, Guilherme, a gente tem o povo de Portugal que assiste, está assistindo Olá, a nossa live. Portugal, Pode mandar um abraço aí para vocês. O pessoal da Austrália também está assistindo Olá, a nossa live brasileira. E o pessoal de fala hispana também. A gente vai fazer, Estamos Guilherme, juntos. uma live em breve também com o pessoal... É, hispano que curte esse tipo de conteúdo, a live vai ser em espanhol. A nossa live hoje, eu tô explicando aqui, vai estar em português por enquanto, porque a gente tá esperando a Lana entrar, mas a live vai ser em inglês. Então, por mais que você não entenda muito, não tem problema, o Guilherme pode ir ajudando aí na tradução. Eu vou fazer a entrevista com a Lani e vou rasgar todo o meu... Ai, meu Deus, eu tô falando assim, é porque eu tô nervosa. Eu ensaiei o roteiro, mas vou falar. Mas eu vou rasgar e eu cago, entendeu? Eu tô nem ligando e o povo vai... Ai, meu Deus! Quem você tá falando inglês? Eu vou falar inglês nessa live hoje. Então se segura, porque aperta o cinto, porque essa live vai ser épica. Guilherme, cadê a Lani? Convidou ela? Já tá vindo, ela tá entrando aí, né? Já no, no, nos próximos minutos, ela tá bem empolgada, né? A gente tá mantendo aí vocês no suspense. Mas, assim, a, esse aqui é uma live, assim, especial, a gente nunca fez nada igual isso, né, quer dizer, não. algo assim dessa repercussão é, e, e trazer para você, eu sei que a gente tem muitos pais aqui, a gente também tem pais com filhos, é, filhos que talvez querem né, ter uma experiência como a dela e você vai poder ter todas as suas dúvidas respondidas de como é estudar numa universidade da, é, das elites aqui dos Estados Unidos é, e, e ter isso de uma experiência pessoal de uma aluna, né, quer dizer, que Sim. estuda lá. Guilherme, compartilha um pouco é, sobre como foi o seu processo enquanto a Lani não entra. Como foi o seu processo para entrar em Princeton? É, é muito difícil entrar em Princeton, uma vez que Princeton é uma das principais universidades americanas, assim, dos Estados Unidos, uma das mais antigas. Como foi o seu processo? É, então, assim, essa, essas é, universidades têm, assim, um, um longo né, processo de aplicação que você precisa fazer, você tem que ter notas, assim, é um processo, o bom, né, que é um processo holístico. Né, que eles avaliam, é, eles avaliam você como um todo, então eles vão olhar o seu currículo, o seu histórico, é, as suas notas né, no, no, nos, é, nos respectivos programas com os quais você concluiu, é justamente para ter alguém que vai se encaixar nesse perfil né, que eles querem. Então, assim, não é, não é somente, é, como é que a gente pode dizer, é, querer vestibular uma é, nota, Querer né, chegar lá e é, entrou. Isso, tem é, todo sim. um processo de avaliação para poder o aluno ser qualificado para entrar. Exato. Guilherme, se eu tenho, por exemplo, as minhas notas do ensino médio do Brasil, se eu tenho as minhas notas da faculdade, pós-graduação, do mestrado, como é que eu faço para traduzir essas notas do Brasil para cá? Pra... Porque assim, ó, não é assim, não é igual você no Brasil quer é entrar é, numa faculdade e faz o vestibular. Tem uma, uma mesa diretiva que vai avaliar a sua vida acadêmica para ver se sim. você está qualificado para entrar na melhor universidade do mundo, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, enfim. Exato. E aí, Guilherme, como é que eu faço para traduzir, por exemplo, as minhas notas do Brasil para cá, para os Estados é, Unidos? Ger é, geralmente, assim, é um processo que é, varia muito né, de, de cada programa, mas geralmente eles vão fazer assim, alguma espécie de, de conversão, né? É, digamos assim, das suas notas no Brasil para o, o, o que a gente chama aqui do GPA, né? Que é o é a média por notas que você tem no seu, no seu histórico escolar. Então, isso é uma coisa que, geralmente, é, é, a universidade é, vai pedir. O meu caso é um pouco diferente, porque eu, eu, eu tive que fazer essa, essa conversão. Ela entrou aí, viu, quer dizer? Ah, ok. É, Pede para só... ela mandar o convite que eu aceito aqui. Ok. Só mandar aqui. É. Oh, então, assim, o que o Guilherme está falando é que 
Eu acho que ela mandou aqui, Guilherme. Ela ok, mandou... já aceitou, hã? Huh? Maravilha. Pra você, tá. Vamos agora, agora, a partir de inglês. agora, só agora inglês, é inglês, tá, povo? Se segura. Ok. Hey, hey, how's it going, Good, good, good. How's it good? How's it going? How's it how's it influencing? Really? really? It's good. It's been cold today. So it's yeah. It's been a, like in it's in the 40s, but sometimes yeah. when it's like cloudy, it it gets kinda oh, it's a little bit cooler too. than if it's mm -hmm. sunny. Yeah, yeah. Kezia, nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah, say hi to Kezia. She's my co-host Lani. Yes, nice to meet you. Hi. And our, our guests, uh, cool. I should say our viewers, are we have people from all over. We have people from Australia, Portugal, Brazil. So it's a it's a pretty wide uh, audience. So say hi to I them. Mean... Hey, hey. Well, that's amazing. Hey, everyone. And Lani, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Or, uh, where are you at now and, and what are you doing? Oh, you're, you're down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so she's down, folks, but she's coming back up. Let's just give a little bit of a minute. And in the meanwhile, we want to talk to you guys about our mugs that we have. These are the Artificial Hearts mugs. You can get your very own uh, on our website, right, Kezia? Is that, yes. is that right? Yes, uh, artificialheart.com. You can make your order and give it this. Uh, let, me, let me accept to her. Okay, All right, she's coming back, folks. But mm -hmm. don't forget, folks, to get your mug here with us. Okay, you can get your Christopher mug. Mm -hmm. Faith does not, in the realist, spring from the miracle, but the miracle from Faith. And we have this other mug. And don't forget to support this mission if you want some mm -hmm. wholesome, good uh, entertainment with Christian, Christian values. Look at this, Lani. This I is love my it. favorite shirt about this project, Artificial Hearts, is this. You can make your website, artificialheart.com, and support this project because new generation needed this. Uh, need this. Uh, let me see. The specifically word, Guilherme. What new generation need this? Why new generation needed this project in her life, their life? Uh, I think they need it, Kezia, because there's so much garbage out there that I think that this can come as a breath of fresh air. Yeah, so nice. we really want to give uh, entertainment that is fun, that's entertaining, and something that you can watch on a Saturday night and not feel offended uh, in, your, in, 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 your, in your most cherished uh, values. And that's why we're, we have a privilege. We're really happy to have you here, Lonnie. Um, Thank you, Pastor. A lot of your viewers, our viewers, Lonnie, they come from different backgrounds. A lot of them are our parents, are 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 maybe students, are young, like our young, our young folks who are maybe thinking of pursuing uh, a higher education and and a very elite university. And we wanted we wanted you to tell us a little bit about kind of your journey. What kind of inspired you? Uh, to go into uh, engineering and how has your experience been as a senior majoring in it? So tell us maybe a little bit how was that kind of that academic journey, you know, from from going from, you know, uh, Florida, right? You can tell us a little bit more of that to here. Take to it easy, man. Hold on. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Funny Funny question, Larry. question. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Hold on. <laughs> Go ahead, Lani. It's welcome. This podcast is, is important for us. This epic podcast today because it's my first interview in English. My yeah, first you're... language is in Portuguese. Yeah, take it slow. <laughs> and take uh, your patience with me because uh, my first question, get at me. Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. Go ahead. My first question for you. Mm -hmm. But I make my um, go here and I read for you. Uh, it's mm -hmm. great having you in this podcast. And let's start with your journey at Princeton. It's first mm -hmm. time. And 
What inspired you pursuing engineering, engineer, and how has your experience been as a senior manager in it? Is? Go ahead. Uh, okay, perfect. Um, that was I, I love this question. Um, so I was cut off earlier, but for everyone that doesn't know me, my name is Lonnie Fan. I am a senior at Princeton University, so I'm currently in New Jersey right now. Um, so yeah, I am currently majoring in civil engineering. So I went from an architecture, I entered into Princeton with architecture in mind, but then um, over the course of my freshman year, I decided to switch over to civil engineering. And civil engineering is just like um, a branch of engineering that focuses on different structures and bridges. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I went into school with an architecture major in mind, but then I ended up switching over to engineering. Um, yeah, um, so basically at Princeton, the reason why I went over, oh, actually, let me just start with like my interest in architecture in general. Yeah, um, Yeah, of course. So um, in middle school and high school, um, yeah, I will talk about it more probably later in the interview. It was just I, I had this very big passion for arts. So anything mm -hmm. artistic related, um, either it's musical or visual, especially visual. I'm a very big drawer. I paint a lot. Um, yeah, so it started off from there as a kid. That's just something I've always been interested, interested in. But then in high school and um, yeah, in high school, actually, I started excelling in my mathematics, ma my mathematics courses. So then I had this in mind, I, I like in theory, I guess architecture is always associated with math and, and drawing. So it was like a very good place for me to start in terms of entering into school. Um, in terms of going from architecture engineer like architecture to engineering um i went to princeton with architecture in mind so then i took some architecture classes here but then the curriculum the architecture curriculum at princeton is very different than what i expected so first um i when i took the architecture classes in freshman year they were very like history based of course because it was just like an introduction course but then going on to like a higher level of architecture courses it became um it, it was still very uh liberal arts based meaning it was a lot on design of course but then for example designing a structure doesn't have to make sense for it to be good for example what i mean by that is in class i could design anything i want and then sometimes it wouldn't make sense in terms of physics for example i can draw like a floating slab and then make it look pretty and then the professor would be like okay that's good that's great mm -hmm. but then for me that doesn't make sense because uh -huh. yeah. you can't have anything floating like that so then i started looking into the civil engineering degree because again it takes that architecture that i like and then it morphs it into something more that makes more sense with more math even though i don't like the more math part but it just makes more sense um, so then I switched over to the civil engineering degree, but so now I'm pursuing a civil engineering degree and then I'm minoring in something called architecture and engineering. So I still take those architecture courses, but now things start to make sense mm -hmm. um, a little bit more since I have the math to it. So engineering, the second part of your question was about being an engineering major like as a senior right now. Um, right now it's been very difficult only because when you're switching from architecture to civil engineering at Princeton, you go from a Bachelor of Arts to a Bachelor's of Sciences. Um, so then you have more classes to take. So then I have a lot of prerequisites that I had to like that a lot of students took their freshman year, for example, but now I have to end up still taking it as a senior. So not only do I have my senior obligations, such as my senior dissertation and my thesis and stuff, but also I have to focus on my courses. So that's been a handful for me um but i'm still taking it day by day there's no point in like thinking about everything and getting overwhelmed by it so i'm just taking it day by day slowly especially as we're entering into mm -hmm. finals coming up this upcoming exactly. week. Mm -hmm. i love it uh go ahead Dylan. and how was um i, I know like you, you you've been talking a little bit kind of like about this adjustment and this kind of new phase of, of where you are in in school how was the kind of the transition? Because I know I know you're from Florida. You can tell maybe a little bit more about that. But how was that kind of change of scenery as a Florida girl and going up here north uh, to Princeton, New Jersey, and adjusting to that? Yeah, of course. Like the first thing that pops in my mind is like weather. Like that's yeah. the that's the biggest thing. Um, so yeah, 
At home, it's just very, very hot and sticky, like very humid. Florida is very hot. It is very humid all around. Even during, mm-hmm. like during this time right now, my mom was, I was on the phone with my mom like yesterday and she was just talking about how hot and humid it is. I think it's like in the, like the 80s, I think. And then, <gasps> yeah, and then, you. I know. Wow. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get, it's not going to get coded until like, I think Thursday-ish, but then it's like in the six. they're coded in the 60s. So that's like their their winter jacket kind of day. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's interesting. But yeah, so going from weather-wise, it was a very big adjustment for me because um, I actually realized that I like um, I like the cold a lot more than I thought. Like back home, really? it's very hot and humid. Yeah, so at home, it's very hot and humid. So you always have to be in AC. But then if you, like up here, it's like, we have our good days, like we have our, our warmer days, but then we also have our cooler days. But for me, it just makes more sense to layer on more clothes. But when you're at, like really, really hot, there's only so much you can take off. So it's like, it's, it. exactly. So it gets annoying in terms of that. Um, another thing that I really enjoy about the North so far is um, like the seasons. In yeah. Florida, we only have one season. So really? Like, we have, yeah, we just have summer like and, and rain. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, so it's nice to like see like leaves changing color because for us it's just uh-huh. green all the time but like that's the fun kind of bright green but like the rainy hurricane season kind of mm. kind of mm. trees yeah um, yeah no. so yeah uh i feel like the biggest part of my like adjustment in terms of going from florida to the north is like in terms of like my my spiritual journey so yeah, tell yeah. us about that please oh okay perfect sounds good um so just like not going to too much detail because we could be here for a while but yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah i recently converted to um adventism so i grew up buddhist or yeah my family is buddhist so then um i started going to church like an adventist church um around last year or the summer so at home i went to a, a haitian french church that was the seventh day adventist and then i when i came here i started going to church with galeramy i go to the princeton sda church um and then yeah i guess the biggest part about my spiritual journey in terms of my um but between florida and, and new jersey is that there's just so many more resources here for me to be able to grow and build on my connections, especially in terms of my spiritual growth, my spiritual exactly. journey. Uh-huh. Um, at home, I was very limited by the opportunities that were there. For example, the church that I went to, they were amazing. They were fine. But there wasn't a lot of, let's say, connections between different churches mm-hmm. or there wasn't yeah. much yeah communication between any adventist groups in the area or anything like that so it's just saturday i go to church and then that's it so then going up here and having such a strong network of people um from either new york or in in philadelphia just being able to commute back and forth and plan things and everyone is just in communication with each other it really inspires me or it really calls me to actually stay in this area possibly um post-graduation to just continue to maintain those relationships and continue to build on those things and make sure that I um, am in a environment where I can spiritually grow in all directions. And yeah, just one quick like thing to mention, like back home as well, my family um, is Buddhist. So I didn't have like rides to church or anything. So that was a little bit difficult to kind of get that organized over like the summer and stuff. So I was very limited by the things that I can do spiritually at home. Mm -hmm. Um, So being up here has really, really helped me improve and and grow on my um, spiritual path because there's people at church that can take me to to church every Saturday. And then even that, like even commuting back and forth, either via train to just visit other churches, that's been very helpful and inspiring. And it's been very, it's, it's been an incredible part of my spiritual journey so far. Absolutely. Wow. Impressive. Oh, Lani, I, you <laughs> answer me in the next question. <laughs> it is it's very impressive that you confounding in Princeton Adventist Christian Fellowship. Could you share more about your motivation behind the start of this fellowship and how it has impacted and both you and the Princeton community? Yeah, of course. So right now we're 
I'm like I'm live from the Princeton ACF account. So um, yeah, so I am one of the leaders along with Joella Rinda and Amelia Brown, who um, basically are are kind of are fa founded this mm -hmm. this I guess group. I wouldn't say found like we didn't really find it. We actually had a Princeton Adventist Christian Fellowship here before. It was just dormant for a while, so it was mm -hmm. like close like no one. There was no members. There was no funds going in and out. Um, so then. Um, Galerni actually played a huge part in this because we didn't know that he was involved with like ACF at a divisional level mm -hmm. um, until one day at church when he finally opened up to us about his role at the divisional yeah. level and then we were like okay if we have someone at church who is already at that level why do not why do we not have yeah. a pastor yeah, yeah. so <laughs> that's when Galerni started helping us um giving us resources, giving pressuring us connections them. to kind of, yeah, yeah, pressuring us. Yeah. All of a sudden, that's when the pressure starts. Um, that's, that was really fun. But over there, over the summer at the, um, the we yeah, over the summer, we went to Canada, all three all three of us. Actually, Glamy as well, so all four of us. Yeah. Um, there's three of us there. Where in Canada? Glamour, me, um, in Ottawa, Ottawa, yeah. Canada. Yeah, um, to, uh, because they hosted a um, institute, it was called, Adventist Christian Fellowship Institute, where a bunch of different ACF chapters from all around the nation, even in Canada, all around the, yeah, the North America, actually, uh, gathered together and stuff. And that was when we didn't have an ACF chapter yet. So being around everyone and being surrounded by um, all these incredible people, but also hearing their stories about how their ministries on their campuses have touched other people or how they're, um, what they're doing on their campus, it makes us reflect on our own campus. You know, how do we want to bring this back to the things that we're doing on this campus? So then we, that's when we like registered. We registered straight from ACFI. We registered onto, uh, to register to become a chapter, at, um, yeah, at, on campus. And then when we went back to campus, when we started fall semester, so this mm -hmm. fall semester, that's when we started contacting a lot of the people here um, at, basically like all the deans here all the deans of you know religious life and stuff and that's when we're able to get started on um yeah on this journey so yeah um yeah that's why we're here now um uh, we're having our first event this saturday yeah. um so we're super excited for that since um, god has been working through us in, in many different ways and hopefully after this event um things can start picking up and we can start con st actually continue to spread um, spread love and love and support over throughout the entire campus. What what yeah. is maybe uh, Lonnie? What would you tell maybe? Because we have a lot of viewers, we have viewers of different faiths, of different traditions. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? Explain to them like what is the Princeton ACF, and maybe one memorable experience that you've had that's been very impactful, maybe from that trip in Canada. Yeah. That, that you can kind of remember if you want to maybe share with our viewers. Of course. Okay, so for those that don't know, Princeton ACF stands for Princeton Adventist Christian Fellowship. So ACF is not something that's unique to our school. So it's mm. a, it's a nation, no, it's a North, it's a, it's a North America thing, right? Glamy? Yes. Yeah. So basically, um, Adventist Christian Fellowship is just basically a ministry led by students for students um all around campuses that are non uh, like are not adventist um and we just basically have different social events different spiritual events to continue to spread god's love and his message all around the nation basically especially on campuses where um there's not a lot of religious impact or a lot of faith going on around the campus um these chapters are very essential to just being able to have a place for students to gather for support for um, just fun actually these events are always so fun so just places for students to gather to have fun and um, continue to fellowship with one another and build on each other and help each other grow um, spiritually so yeah I mentioned briefly earlier and Glaramini was talking about it too over the summer um, we gathered or yeah there was an event hosted not event but there was a conference hosted in Ottawa, Canada, um, for all the ACF chapters to gather from all around North America. And 
Honestly, I Joella can back me up on this. Amelia can back me up on this. We had an incredible time at this institute mm-hmm. since it was so inspirational. And um, yeah, it was just so impactful for all of us. Um, and then uh, I think a memorable experience for us. Um, there were so many amazing like workshops that we got to be a part of. So many incredible music. Amelia and Joella were involved in so much of the musical um, aspects of ACFI. Um, I also got to share my testimony for the first time, which was also really, really inspiring and very, very powerful since I it was the first time talking about it. Um, but it, got, it seemed like it touched a lot of people. So that made me really happy. Um, so that was really exciting. And then I think usually my favorite parts are the times where Joella and Amelia and I would actually just come back to the come back to like the, our rooms from a, like a long day of just being out and just being around with so many spiritually um, centered um, students like like we are and just be able to sit down and reflect on every day together and just sit down and debrief on our day. I think those were the moments that I really enjoyed the most. Um, yeah. What would you mm-hmm. tell somebody like if you wanted them to come to an ACFI conference? An ACFI conference? Yeah, or an um, ACF event. Like, well, what's so good about it? Why should I come? <laughs> well, like the thing that I always advertise is just being able to just spend time, like quality time with people that just really, really care and love you and support you in any way that you possibly can. So for our kickoff event that's coming up, I just we've just been really, really advertising the whole fellowship aspect. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that makes an event. It's the people. It's not really the stuff that's going on. It's not the stuff that you plan. It's not the decorations, the music, but it's really just the people there that makes it so amazing and so great. So yeah, these ACF events or these campus events that or even ACFI, which is a bigger uh, conference, but even these little events, you should always come because one, there's always free food somewhere. So that's always <laughs> a selling point for a lot of people. Um, but then especially if you always just want to be feel renewed and just be able to rest and have fun <laughs> and enjoy time with quality time with people that care about you. These ACF events are always amazing to be a part of. And wow. Lonnie, before before we start, not not to cut you off, kid. Cut, just <laughs> one more question, Kenzie. One, <laughs> one more question. One more question. Okay. No, I'm gonna let you though. I'm gonna let you. I promise. Okay, so, okay. like, just just kind of one more question, Lonnie, because I just want to backtrack a little, because yeah. I, I kind of want to save the best for last, which is this great event that we're gonna be having at Princeton okay. University. So, if you're in the Princeton mm-hmm. University area, even if you're in the New York metropolitan area, please come by. I, I, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna allow Lonnie to talk a little bit more about that. But before Kezia asks her question, I just want to ask one more question, just to backtrack us a little bit, because uh, it's also important to emphasize here that you're a student at Princeton U- University. You're a student at one of America's uh, preeminent universities. I think it was ranked number one. And we have here a lot of viewers, a lot of people from around the world. Uh, I know Oppenheimer was just was just filmed at Princeton last year. I actually fell asleep when when they were filming it. I thought it was like some tragedy or like some some crazy <laughs> stuff that was going on. But but thank God they were just like filming the movie. But anyway, so you're at this very elite. You're at this very prestigious institution. You're a really smart girl, right? So maybe tell us a little bit about like how was the journey uh, getting into Princeton. And what is the day-to-day life of a Princeton student for us? Okay, so I just want to preface that my answer is not going to sound as exciting yeah. as the way that Galerami just introduced it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have other people oh my goodness. Up with this as well. Yeah, you. so um, I come from Florida and, and a from a high school that was not, yeah, it was a title, a title one school, so meaning uh, we didn't have a lot of resources. We were really poor. So I, the area that I live in, Florida, and even my, my family, even, we we're not very well off. We're considered low income. So going to, mm-hmm. for example, right now as a, like a Princeton student, I'm considered like first generation low income. Mm-hmm. Um, so back home, there's not a lot of resources for us. Like our, our lunches were free. Um, like our SATs were paid for because we just were really poor and we couldn't afford those things. I got into Princeton through uh, the QuestBridge Scholarship, which is this scholarship that basically 
you apply for it as a first generation low or not even first generation just low income student um um and there's certain requirements they have to meet like for example your family has to make less than this amount or these are the grades that you have to get um but then once once you apply if you become a finalist you have this amazing opportunity to be matched with one of the schools that you end up choosing and then once you're matched with them you basically get a full ride to that college um so i applied to questbridge um, along with a few other schools through oh i applied to princeton through questbridge along with a few other schools and fortunately i was very very of course very blessed and was matched with uh princeton hey. so yeah the process was tedious and long <laughs> like reality wise you know reality wise like it was very tedious and long i think it was very stressful in general i feel like a lot of high school seniors relate to this it's just during that time where you're finishing school mm -hmm. and trying to you know trying to figure out post graduation plans whether that's you know going to college or whether that's something else just trying to figure out all those things it's a very difficult and um stressful time for a lot of students so during those times uh something that i wish that i did was i wish that i prioritized like my health a little bit more and i wish that i prioritized um like I, i wish i surrounded myself with more people that can support me so that's a big thing about it is that during that time where i was really really stressed i was doing you know it was, it was like back to back essays or just trying to get my recommendations in or trying to get my scores done trying to retake the sat so i have a good score um all those things what could have made it a million times better was if i had like if i had a stronger support system around me and i didn't shut everyone out because i was so busy i wish i made time for more people so that way um they were there for like they were there for my dinners or whatever it is just being able to surround myself with that um support system is very important since um it can give you the strength to actually get through those things and really empower you sometimes when you're busy you have this inclination to kind of push everyone away you just kind of want to get everything done on your own um but what makes what, what i realized even going into princeton um is that the people is what the people are what make you like that what push you um so that's something that going into princeton i've been doing uh, a lot more of so i to touch on your second part of your question glary everyday life at princeton is um not as exciting as the way that you describe it yeah. um so just to go over like my routine without going too much into my routine yeah. like i literally wake up go to my classes in between my classes i eat whenever i can because you don't have to eat like you don't have time to eat when you're in oh my goodness um, yeah. yeah i eat whenever i can and then in um, between those those times if i'm not eating i i squeeze in a nap whenever i can Wow. Um uh, another thing I learned about college you cannot get through a day without a nap. Um so I squeeze yeah. in a nap whenever I can and then after that um I also work on campus. So I work at like the library here and stuff. So I know. if I'm not working, <laughs> yeah, if I'm not working, if I'm not eating, if I'm not sleeping, um, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, how are you living girl? Uh, <laughs> I know. I don't know how I'm living either. Like, I'm surviving at this. How many oh, hours yeah. of study, Lani? Do you think like an average Princeton student clocks in a day just for our viewers? Uh, Doesn't have to be you, but like from observing people like roommates, those kinds of Okay, that's another thing about Princeton. There is there there's a wide range of people. There is people there are people that study from like right after their classes so classes end for most like a lot of people either at noon or at 4 p.m um sometimes at 8 p.m but a lot of students just lock themselves in the library the entire day until when they close which is around 2 a.m wow. 40 so, hours yeah 48 hours per day <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um so yeah. there's students like that but then there's also students like me where i do <laughs> I do my homework and then once I get to the studying part where I have to sit down and study I get too tired and then I realize okay I need to care about myself more so I want to treat myself to 8 hours of sleep. So there's there's a wide range of students here. Mm. Um so you'll see you'll see different parts. Yeah, you know, you'll see a wide range of of study study schedules. And so you consider <laughs> 
yourself run Gen Z and what is the difference in your decision that you see in relation to previous and generations? What hmm. do, do you consider run Gen Z? That's the thing. A lot of people like, okay, so I technically am considered Gen Z in terms of like my birth year because okay. I was born in 2002. Uh -huh. um, but I don't know. I When it comes to like these different generations, I never really put my mind to it except like when it comes to, when it comes to like uh, a spiritual, I guess, viewpoint. Um, so the reason why I don't really put much mind into like my different you know, categories and generations is because I feel like I'm very different than most of like what stereotypically is a, you know, Gen Z person mm -hmm. or student or whatever it is. Um, I'm more, I feel like I don't, I'm not more wise, but I think I'm more grown kind of. I mean, of course, like the older <laughs> part of Gen Z. Um, so yeah, that's a that's an interesting question. I never really thought about how I'm different than previous generations. I guess. Um, so to me, everyone's just everyone's just living their their life. It's my question. Um, my question, Lani, is is because I know Guilherme told me is your lover comic book. You you lover yeah. comic book, and then. This project, Artificial Heart, it's mm -hmm. for impacting new generation, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, and millennials too. And mm -hmm. what's your perception about this book, Artificial Heart, impacting yeah. the new generation? What do you think about? Yeah, okay, so I, yeah, I feel like I don't give Glarmy credit on this. I think that this project is incredible. Um, I really do enjoy, like, cause I, yeah, I'm Thank actually, you. I heard about this project. <laughs> um, the thing is, like, uh, the oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, Glarmy opened up to me about this project about, like, last year when I was yes. at, like, when I started going to church. Um, mm -hmm. It was really exciting. And then he started um, including me more or showing me more on, on the things that he's working on. And I think it's really incredible how, um, how this project really transforms something that's really for example like um a lot of the text or like uh what's that book that the brothers Karamazov. 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 yeah mm -hmm. so i know it's based on that but um that text is very very um old like i i probably wouldn't sit down and read it a thousand kind of. pages yeah. long you wouldn't do exactly that. I, as I a princeton never... student in a sit-in <laughs> okay. in your free time <laughs> he me super nerd, super nerd. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's the Princeton student here at this point. Nah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, even like during like, for example, in, in courses where they do require you to read, like for example, Crime and Punishment, I know that's another text yeah. of, of his. Um, there's not a lot of students my age nowadays that, that would actually sit down and read that book. Maybe a little bit when they're older. But at the same time, we're in a we're in a time where it's transitioning away from that kind of that kind of um, I guess mode of entertainment. Mm, um, yeah. So I think that um, artificial hearts is, is doing an amazing job. Of, I, I literally can't wait for for everything to be in place um, and be released and everything. Um, but I think it does an amazing job of just being able to combine like the interests of newer generations now, which is that whole. Um, like webtoons and manga, and yeah. Manga, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and comic books into and transform it, like transform a very traditional text into something that's more accessible and more enjoyable, especially for this newer generation of um, students and people. Honestly, yeah, this is, is very important for us project because it's values we brought to this project. This is more important for new generation i have two boys 10 yeah. and four years old i think oh my goodness what values their mm -hmm. generation give for another one exactly and this, what impact it had for value christian values for new generation and this this project is this so good match for new generation oh, yeah, yep. no. yeah. i'm so excited <laughs> Like, I'm so yeah, excited. No, I can't wait for it to come out. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Glenn. Go, 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 Glenn. 
Go no, ahead. no, no. Um, I think. Um, no, Lonnie. First of all, thanks for the sh for the love. Like we really appreciate it. Um, I know I've told you before about about this project, and it's really cool to kind of be, uh, whether it's on the sidelines or more directly, uh, having like the Princeton SDA kind of community support. I think it's really important, right? Because entertainment is something that we all like as human beings like we're not always working or even doing like sometimes you just need rest right i think that's kind of mm -hmm. something that you brought up a lot right and i think it's really um important to have um good right quality wholesome inter entertainment and also i think what you mentioned was quality experiences with people right yep. and how has what has been maybe a memorable experience like a positive experience uh that you've had whether at princeton i know you talked a little bit about the experience in canada but what, what's maybe something this this kind of journey that you've taken both intellectual spiritual that has really stood out to you that's a, i i really like that question i love that question honestly um i thinking about my entire like four years of college because okay first year was online but even like three years of college so far i honestly every single time that anyone asked me that question like what's the most memorable experience for you at princeton so far um i i don't know why but the people at church like princeton sda church always pops up in my head um i really really i i never imagined like i never had that kind of community um, like, for example, freshman and sophomore year. And sophomore year was a very, very hard point of my life. Um, and then I started finding the SD, SDA church um, last year, so junior year. And then my entire life changed. I'm blessed with these incredible people, Guilherme and then Andrew and, and, you know, Joella, Amelia. And now we have Louisa and Wayne and, and just We're people that We're also invited we, to be on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you'll, you'll hear from them soon. You'll hear from yeah, them Yeah, you'll get to meet them on our um, next episodes. Yeah, so I always think about our, our church and I think my favorite memory so far as a church is just being able to hop on a train and then just go to New York whenever we wanted, like on a yeah. Saturday to visit another church or anything like that. It's always been so fun just being able to laugh and just spend time with each other. For example, that one hour train ride or however long into the city never felt like an hour because we were always talking or always laughing. Um, so every single time I do think about something memorable at Princeton, I always think about like the laughter or, or just the people that I'm around rather than the things that we're doing or, you know, the events that are going on. Um, so that's been really, really fun. Just being able to spend that time with the people I really care about and the people that I love, um, especially in, in a very, uh, in a church setting. So that's been really fun. Oh, that's fantastic. And, yeah. And the, my likely question for you, Lani, is if you could co um collaborate with any comic book artist or writing, who would it be and why? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. This is a good question too. Um yeah, so I don't know what the first thing that pops in my mind is like I'm I love like Charlie Brown. So like Really? Like, like, penis, yeah, like the penis <laughs> Oh wow. <That's... laughs> I love it. I, I love comics. I, I, I love the, the Charlie Brown little comics because I especially comic strips, that's where like I get most of my entertainment. Like I'm always looking for the comic section in, in like a newspaper. Um so Charles wow. Schultz. So Charles Schultz is I think the author and the the um the illustrator for, for the Peanuts comic mm -hmm. strips, but unfortunately he passed away. But oh. if I could, I would collaborate with him um, because I think that they're, they're co his comics are always so wholesome um, and they always make me smile and they always make me really happy and I think the characters are very fun. So I always enjoy. Cute. Um, <laughs> yes, they're so cute. Um, so I always enjoy um, those little comic strips. So I would pick, I would pick it was illustrated. I actually also want to, you know, collaborate, like, you know, with, with Galerme, you know, uh, maybe we can put up a, pull up with a comic together. Uh, Absolutely. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, Bonnie involved. The door is open for you. Pull up her network coming. with our network. Enjoy with us. Yeah. Exactly. You're, 
Well, the, there's the invitation, and let's let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, Sounds Alani's good. an artist, by the way, Kezia. Uh, she she had uh, before before. She, I know she's not done answering your question, but uh, we also want to give a shout out to her to to the Princeton ACF and to the really cool artwork that she's done. But sorry, yeah. Alani, just to wrap it up before we go to our final question. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. No, I. I oh, finished. awesome. No, okay, yeah, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. My so, Lonnie, question tell us a making. little bit more. I, I know you. I know we talked a lot about the uh, Princeton ACF, <laughs> but maybe just tell us a little bit more about this really cool event that you guys are organizing at Princeton University. How did that come about? I know that you made me a meme, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't so much love for you, Glammy. Yeah, so much love. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, like, tell 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 our viewers, because maybe some of them are even. It's funny. I know even some people at the <laughs> seminary want to go to church. So I, I'm assuming I think that they're creeping on our IG page. Okay. Because okay. I'm very surprised. Because I've never seen uh, like my colleagues at the seminary excited to go to the Seventh Day Adventist yeah. Church. <laughs> So I really think they've been maybe seen kind of the post that I've, I've I've done or repostings that I've done I should say mm -hmm. of kind of the content that you're producing. So just tell us a little bit about this uh, event that that you and uh, our other three uh, directors of the Princeton ACF, or well, the two uh, are hosting, what it is and who's invited and and, and what's so cool about it. Yes, yeah, of course. So um, as I mentioned earlier. This ACF event on this Saturday is going to be our first ever event to kick off Princeton ACF, considering the fact that it's been dormant for the past, like over a decade, basically. So we haven't, we've never, we haven't had a Adventist um, event here on campus since over a decade ago. So this is going to be super duper exciting for all of us. So basically this Saturday we are hosting a cozy cocoa kickoff. So basically just a very, very fun night. Um, it was um, Sister Janelle's um, idea, actually. She wanted to host a game night for the youth at church. Um, and we realized that, hey, like we can totally just do it and host it on campus. So that way, cause we have all the resources for it. We have rooms here, we have funding and we have an incredible like support system here already. Let's just bring everyone like that's involved at church over here especially since it's only like a five minute drive away from church um so we wanted to collaborate basically it will be our first um princeton acs event but then it's also we're getting immense support from the church as well because sister janelle's helping us put all of this together and basically for our cozy coco kickoff we're having a very very fun night of fellowship night of food night of fun night of fellowship is what we've been advertising it as uh, it's just a lot of people are going to be from the church as well um just gonna be a really fun night of, of a game night we're also gonna have different holiday refreshments just me able to enjoy that time together but also making sure that no one is hungry um so we'll all we'll have hot cocoa there everything we're gonna try to make sure that everything's also vegan friendly um so i know awesome. that that's like a, a a really important thing to keep in mind as well um and then another thing that we're hoping that people do is also show up in their pajamas yeah, like yeah, yeah. advertising the name it has to be cozy you know yeah. so just showing in comfortable it. clothes yeah you know, showing in comfortable clothes just being able to have fun and just spend time to have conversations laugh enjoy time together um for us at least for princeton students it will be two days after the last day of classes and it'll be the start of our reading period which is the period that we start to study for exams get our final projects done so hopefully that will be a good way to end the, the end our um like semester basically and our classes but also be able to prepare us for the holiday season coming up just making sure that everyone has a nice festive feeling in their hearts um a thing that i hear about from yeah i hear about this from amelia too uh last time we talked um it's just that usually around this time because all the students are so stressed sometimes we don't even get to enjoy the holidays or it doesn't even kick in our mind that you know the holidays are coming up until like we're at home on December 22nd or December 23rd. So right. being able to have this event 
um, hopefully we'll be able to bring that warmth and that love back into the community, especially right before stress hits with all the finals. So everyone is invited. Um, if you have kids, if they're older than 14, they're allowed to come. <laughs> yeah. A lot of college family there. friendly, right, Lonnie? Yeah, family, family friendly, friendly, family friendly. Yeah, family um, friendly. But yeah, since there's going to uh, be students from, it's open to non advantaged students, it's open to just the Princeton campus in general, it's open to other campuses, anyone that has access or are available to come. We have a train station right there, so if you're from New York, wherever you have a train that will take you directly to the Princeton campus, even the Philadelphia area, you can hop on, hop on the 30th Street station, and then you can take a train straight <laughs> here as well, right on campus, wherever you're coming from, we're open to everyone coming um yeah learn and invite your seminary friends too they're all absolutely friends. yeah uh, lani uh you are so dynamic and intelligent girl you impacted me this interview is very Aww. uh wonderful for me because you share with us about your life your experience you remember when i was uh, living dorm in Brazil for a long time. <laughs> I'm, I'm young yet, but when long time ago, I remember when I was and the dorm is good experience. And you yeah. have one dynamic and intelligent spirit. Share with us <laughs> and enjoy with us this product because we need someone like you. <laughs> that sounds perfect i would love to be involved in any way that i can like even this doing this little interview like it, it literally i'm so happy that we were able to make it work i know my you know all of our schedules are really busy so i'm so glad that we we're able to sit down and just have this talk with one another and just be able to you know just be able to ex to spend quality time with one another and just have a lot of fun no i and, and we appreciate it lonnie we know we know that you are busy we know how the schedule is uh, of our lives here at princeton but we're really glad that you're able to share so folks stay tuned um if you are in the princeton area do not miss out on this great event uh hosted yeah. by yours tr yours truly lonnie fam who is now part of the eight, the I should say artificial hearts family. We hope to have her here with you guys Yay! again, uh, sharing more projects of what she's doing. Maybe she can even come up with some more ideas that we can share here and promote on our platform. So we want to thank you all uh, for tuning in with us. Um, it's been really a blast uh, during this to share, give you all a little bit of some holiday cheer, right? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Right? And don't yeah, forget to get here. your mug, right? Because this mug will look yeah. really good yeah. at the event on Saturday night, Lonnie. Is it mm -hmm. 7.30? Yep, 7.30. All the information yeah. is on our Instagram page, so just go ahead and click on it. Yeah, so you can also, me, so you can come and make, bring your Artificial Hearts mug, right? Your Christopher mug. And, and the, the three shirt. Mug. Yes, and your yeah. shirt. And your shirt. Yeah, your shirt. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, anyway, thank you all. Kez, do you have anything you. else you want to share with our viewers? No, no, no. Thank you, Lenny, for your time, for sharing with your experience with us. And God bless you. And see you a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay, thank you so much, and they, and Thank you to everyone. Thank you so much, Lenny. We really thank appreciate you. it. And we, we I, at least me, I know Kez is in Chicago, but hopefully we can get her in the near future to come to one of our ACF events. Absolutely. Yes. I will awesome. have to see you there. Absolutely. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. And. E vocês okay. que continuam aqui com a gente. E aí, pessoal, não esqueça de comprar a sua xícara do Artificial Hearts. Né? A Kesa. Dá de presente, né? Quase engasguei aqui, agora. mas tá linda, né? <risos> Tá, tá linda. linda. Eu engasguei yeah. de tão bela que é, né, Kézia? Fala você aí. Ficou, você ficou tão feliz que falou assim, oh, ai meu Deus, é. meu coração <risos> cheio de as batidas agora. É, eu, eu, eu não consegui respirar de tão bela que é, né? Cara, que massa, Guilherme. Essa entrevista foi muito massa. Eu achei que eu ia ficar muito mais nervosa do que eu fiquei. Mas, mas foi, foi muito... sua experiência, Kézia. Conta aí um pouco pra foi gente. Foi ter falado top. com uma aluna de Princeton. Como cara, é que foi comparado com a sua expectativa do que, do que cara, seria? Você sabe, Guilherme, eu já vivi... Eu não sou velha, né? Eu sou jovem, eu sou uma milênio, <risos> mas eu já vivi muita coisa nessa vida porque eu comecei a minha jornada muito cedo. Então, 
com, ouvi a história de uma jovem como a Alane, tão espirituosa, tão dinâmica, inteligente, envolvida em projetos, com uma família. Você viu ela falando, cara, que Sim. ela é adventista de uma família de budista, cara. <risos> E ela, tipo, enfrenta a cultura, porque ela morava na Flórida, ela, ela é da Flórida, foi para Princeton, e o Jersey é uma cultura totalmente diferente, com um season diferente, e ela, tipo, enfrenta desafios culturais, climáticos, é, religiosos, e tá aí com a cara e a coragem enfrentando a Princeton, a principal universidade dos Estados Unidos, Vamos dizer assim, e cara, a gente precisa de uma pessoa com essa cabeça, com esse espírito dentro desse projeto. E você que tá aí assistindo a nossa live, se você é esse tipo de pessoa dinâmico, não tem medo dos desafios, não tem medo de enfrentar barreiras culturais, idiomáticas, por exemplo, eu cheguei aqui em Guilherme, nos Estados Unidos, eu não sabia falar nem how are you, tá? E tudo que eu aprendi a falar de inglês, eu aprendi aqui. E eu continuo estudando inglês e eu fiquei pensando assim, ah, eu, eu não tô nem aí se o meu inglês vai ficar lindo com acento, vai sair algumas palavras num suar diferente, mas a gente não pode se, se ser refém do medo, a gente tem que enfrentar os nossos medos, sabe? E ela é o exemplo disso, ela enfrentou os desafios dela de barreira cultural, morando, nasceu no estado, foi para outro totalmente diferente. Foi para outros países, família budista, ela adventista. Então imagina, cara, isso aí para mim é demais, é inspirador. E histórias como essa é o que o nosso projeto quer trazer, sabe? Histórias impactantes que inspirem outras pessoas a fazerem as mesmas coisas. É, o que eu gostei também nessa entrevista, né? Que a gente vê às vezes, assim, é, pessoas que estão num contexto... É, religioso, denominacional, se sentem tão reprimidos, mas no caso, para ela, aquilo foi o que é, ajudou ela, né? Então a gente vê assim o poder da fé, a gente vê o poder da religião para preencher né, esse vazio que muitas pessoas têm hoje em dia, né? Ela, ela falou um pouco é, da, da diferença que a, a experiência religiosa dela na igreja fez Sim. e ajudar mesmo ela na, nesse ambiente né, extremamente... É competitivo, intelectualmente competitivo e que tem valores muito diferentes com os quais ela mesma acabou abraçando, né? Que é os valores da fé, da religião. Sim. Então, acho que, assim, para mim isso foi um testemunho, uma história né, de, de vida muito poderosa. Eu achei também, é, né? Então, é, a gente não entrou muito, né? Mas é, ela falou daquela experiência no Canadá. Foi meio que o, o highlight né, que teve do, do evento que eu, eu tava lá também. Então, assim, a gente espera poder trazer para vocês mais histórias, né, de, de fé e, e, e de, de esperança, né, que é uma coisa que a gente acha que o nosso mundo precisa hoje. Cara, valeu, Guilherme, por trazer essas pessoas. Valeu, aqui. até a próxima, viu? Até a próxima. As próximas lives serão tão impactantes e motivacionais como essa. E tamo junto, cara. Tamo, Tamo junto. junto. Valeu, Valeu, viu? Um abraço boa noite, aí. Um abraço. E se você gostou do nosso conteúdo, por favor, é, aperte o like no nosso canal do YouTube, se inscreva no nosso canal boa. e seja um apoiador desse projeto, viu, pessoal? Abraço e uma ótima noite e um feliz é, Natal pra, e, e um ótimo ano novo para vocês. Não percam, né, Kézia? Não. Só para terminar, a gente vai ter uma, uma visita conhecida, muito especial. Já pode dia... dar spoiler. Pode dar que a galera fique Não, dá não, 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 Kézia. Não dá não, dá não. Não quero que dê. Beleza, não pode beleza, dar. Beleza, Essa, beleza. É a, pra mim, é um amigo do peito. É uma pessoa, não vou dizer... É uma pessoa, né? Mas que eu considero muito e que é muito próximo da Kézia. De, vamos dizer isso. Né? Não, é, não vamos dar spoiler, mas... Não vamos cara, dar spoiler, mas... Isso é, vai, ser uma, tem... vai ser épico, cara, porque... Vai ser a maior nunca... live, né, Kelly, que nós vamos vai. ter no ano de 2023. Vai. Porque essa pessoa nunca fez live e, assim, todo mundo fica louco pra ouvir os insights que essa pessoa tem. Então, vamos lá, Guilherme, vai ser top. Beleza, então, Tamo ó, junto. se vocês gostaram, não esqueçam de se inscrever no nosso canal e aguardem essa live. Abraço Valeu. aí, pessoal. Ficam na paz. Tchau, tchau. Tchau, Guilherme. Tchau, galera. Tchau, tchau. Beijo. Fique Boa noite. Deus. Tchau. Boa noite. Tchau.